Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your host, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're in December for Christmas, and of course that's the last holiday of the year, and I've created a holiday sleigh here that will be wonderful for your table or, or by a fireplace, wherever. I'm sure it would fit in somewhere in your home. It has a beautiful fretwork base on it, all handmade, and we're ready to get started. The material you're going to need for today is as follows. You're going to need one fretwork sleigh base with runners. It's 12 and a half by 7 and a quarters on the base that we'll be weaving on. You'll need number 4 round natural, cut 44 pieces, 25 inches long. Number 2 round dyed scarlet red, 1164 splat dyed scarlet red also. Number 2 round in natural, you'll need some miniature green garland and a gold star garland. And then if you want to put on a silk holly and pine cones, that's optional too. Here's our sleigh base here, and it has the 44 holes all pre-drilled in it. And I'm going to take my number four round, pick out the side that you think is the prettiest, and that put that side up. I'm going to go with the lighter side, which means I have to turn it towards me. Insert a spoke and another. You're going to insert three to get started. This is a little bit different base uh, weave than we've done before. It's just a rolled base, one step. Starting here, you're going to bend it in front of one and down behind that third spoke. I do this weave as I go right along so I don't have to stop and put them all in. Again, I'm taking this far left one in front of the first one, behind the second, and that second one will hold it in. See how that holds itself as I weave right along? I insert a few and then go ahead and come back and weave behind. When you go around your corner, you don't need your length on the bottom quite as long, and it just fits and turns the corner right with you. Let me do one more as we turn the corner. Now, this one is a little bit short, so simply push it up and give it a little bit more room and bend it around the corner. Continue working that base, and I'll show you how to end it. Now that I'm almost back to where I've started, I'm going to finish out these few. The very last one, this is the very first one I put in. I simply come to the other side and give it a little push, open it up, slide that last piece in, and then pull it tight. And see what a pretty border that makes, especially when it's on its side. It's just a real pretty roll border. The front of your sleigh is the front has the rounded corners. The back has the more squared off corners, so you can tell the difference. I'm starting on the side of the basket anywhere and I'm going to triple twine for four rows. I'm going to insert in between three consecutive spokes here my number three, or pardon me, my number two round, holding it with my finger, taking the farthest left one, left piece, go in front of two spokes and behind the third. Again, my next spoke, always the farthest one on the left, taking it in front of two, here's one, two, and behind that third spoke. One more, in front of two, behind the third. Once I have them secured in there once, I can let go, and then I can pull these out. Make sure, it's very important that you keep all of these spokes, all of your uprights, nice and wet. We don't want to take a chance of breaking one of these spokes off. So every once in a while, just stop and dip it in the water and re-wet. Go ahead and work triple twine all the way around the base doing five rows. Okay? Okay, I think I, I told you to go ahead and do five rows. Actually, it's just four rows. We're going to do four rows of the twining on the base. And then, um, I've already done this back weaving, but I want to show you what I've done first. So now let's go to the front of the basket, and that's with the, remember the front is the part with the rounded corners. We're going to start back here, counting from your corner, and this is the one at the side, the spoke at the corner. You're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on that seventh spoke, you're going to start working on that one. And what I'm doing here is I'm coming up to the top. I have 1164 flat dyed the red, and I'm making a loop with it, coming out to the front. Here's the part, the one I looped on. I'm going to skip over this one, the next one, and take both pieces of my loop behind the next spoke. So actually, it looks like 
I'm over two spokes here. Now come behind here and cut off this excess here on the one on the doubled over piece and then weave out the next piece all the way around to the other side and again we're going to be on that seventh spoke. That's where we're going to end it. Okay, I'm going to take this and weave around the corner. Keep your corner nice and round and weave over to your seventh spoke. My seventh spoke is right here. I'm going to weave behind it. Bring the weaver across to the seventh one and the next one going back to the left. Cut it just beyond your third spoke. Slip it behind that third spoke. And again, we have this over two weave. It really builds up this over two weave to be a real pretty weave. Come back and start again on this side. Make sure your right side of your reed is out. I'm going to decrease by one spoke each time. This is where I started, so I know I'm going to decrease by one. Going over my two, behind that third. Oops, I have this backwards. Let's do that again. Okay. Over the two, behind the third. Snip off the end because it's too long. And weave around the two corners. Go to the other side and end it by decreasing by one spoke on the other side. Let me do this one more time for you. Coming around the corner, weaving to that six spoke from the end, the front end, coming back here, going over two. I'm going to hide on the third one back, cut it just beyond that third spoke and tuck it behind the third spoke to end it. You go ahead and you're going to continue this weave and you're going to be ending it on the top part here. And I want to show you that part, how we end it, and then we'll talk about the back too. Now that I'm back to almost where I'm finished, let me show you how to do this last one. We're going to slide it on. I'm decreased by one. Weave over two behind the third. Cut off that excess length again. Weave. This is the one right next to it that I have to turn on. And I'm going to cut here and tuck it there. There are going to be three in the front center that you're not going to weave on. There just isn't enough room to do another set of turns there. When you have that finished, and you're going to do the same thing, you're going to build up your back in the same way. I skipped one spoke here and then started my, er, started my rows and then decreased by each on each row. Same thing over here. I have one empty spoke in the middle. When that's all finished, building up the side of the two ends, then insert two of number two round in the natural and twine for two rows all the way around the base. But you know what? When, let's do three rows in here and uh, triple twine. I think triple twine is so much prettier. So I'm going to go ahead and put triple twine in here, the same thing that we did on our base, and go ahead and do the two rows there. I'm coming on the end of my three rows here and I'm going to end them all inside the basket as I continue that weave. You can cut off these lengths in here so you don't have to attend with all these long lengths in there. And just to note here too, as you're weaving, notice that the back part is more squared off and so we want to keep everything nice and straight and we want to keep the back kind of squared off. Where the front is a little bit more rounded and your weaving will follow that round of the base and have a nice uh, round edges up here at front. Now the next step is to build that back up again. We have done our uh, triple twine with the natural around it. And now we're going to build up another section of the, uh, the back in the red. And it's exactly the same on the very same spokes as the first one we did. So it's a duplicate of the first and uh, the same thing. Then after that we are going to work in our garland. And I'm going to start on the side. Start inside with a piece of garland, and this is a short nap or a short length, I'm not sure what you call it, uh, of the garland, a miniature garland that I've got, and it has a wire in it, so it's real flexible. Starting on the side anywhere, I start with the, tangled here, I start with the end inside the basket, and just do a basic over-under weave all the way around the basket going around your corners 
and, and then I'm going to bring it around here and I'm going to end it um, coming in here inside the basket again in the same spoke that it started in. Then when my second one, to put that one in, I'm going to kind of cheat here a little bit because for time's sake, I'm going to just start it back um, behind a spoke away from where you started your first one. And uh, this is an overweave here with the garland. If you can see, this is an overweave. So I'm going to start behind that spoke and then just go ahead and take this one all the way around and uh, finish it up. And it'll end here in the same spot that it started in. So go ahead and put your garland in, following the curvature of the basket, the way it's weaving up. Now that I've finished my two rows of garland here, I've done another complete set of tur uh, turns that are on the same spokes as the one that uh, we did before, and this is the back of it. And when I did my third set of turns, you can see how this is naturally arching in, and that's good. That's what we want it to do. After your third set of turns, we're going to put in, starting at a side, I like to start over here on this side, we're going to do triple twine again, and go ahead and do two rows of triple twine all the way around the base. When you have that done, do not cut off your ends. I have not cut off my ends here. I've simply coiled them up and pinned them together. And then come back to the hood part of the sleigh again and do another complete set of turns. Exactly the same spokes as before. And as you can see, we have four sets of complete turns on all of those spokes. And doesn't this make a real pretty pattern here where we've done those double uh, over two spokes? I think that's really pretty. When you're back, when that's all finished and you're going to come back now to your lengths of triple twine here, your three lengths, we're going to cut off the center one. And in place of that, we're going to pick up our gold stars, uh, the garland out of the gold stars. And we're going to insert the garland into that third spot. And we're going to triple twine now using that garland in place of the one that we cut off. And I think this is just such a pretty glittery accent to this piece. And treat it just as you would the, the um, reed. Bring it around and twine with it. It has a wire in it, so it bends right around and holds its place really nice. Go ahead and do two rows of the um, triple twine with the garland and end it over here where you started it. Now that I've finished my two rows with the garland, when I'm back to where I began, I'm simply going to cut off the garland, what's remaining, and add another piece of the number two round in the red and continue on triple twining around the base for five more rows. When you have the five rows done, then we're ready to start our top braid. Now that I've finished my five rows, the five twining rows at the top, I've simply ended the cut off the ends and put them inside of the basket. And now, re-soak your top and get it very, very wet. Let it soak for a little while. Um, and we're ready for that top braid. The braid that we're doing on top is called a Gretchen braid. The first step to the Gretchen braid is starting anywhere, come behind one and to the outside. Behind one, to the outside. And that's fairly easy to do. I just work this all the way around. Your spokes will all be pointing out when we finish the first step. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to soak your top spokes very, very well. And as I'm following this uh, curvature of the basket as I do this first step of this final braid, don't forget to put either salt or vinegar into your water. It'll help retain the colors. Kind of set those colors into the reed. Almost back around to where we started. See how quickly that top braid, that first step, can go? When you are back to where you started, oops, just a second here, then you're going to go back to the very first one and push it up, and it inserts from the back to the front under that first one. That's the first step. 
Now, to do the Gretchen braid, the second step, starting anywhere, take three spokes into your left hand. The farthest left spoke in your hand is going to cross over the two and go down, and you're going to hold it down with the back of your hand. Then you're going to pick up another spoke on the right. Again, take the left one over two and down and hold it down. Pick up that third one, cross over. Pick up the third one, cross it over two and down. I'm holding it with the back of my hand. Pick up another one. So I always have, after I complete that one, I always have three in my hand. And you're going to work this pattern around the basket. When I get that done, I'm going to come in here and push these down, because I see how this is a little loose in here? Just give that uh, some pushes and flatten that out a little bit. Keep this all straight. Follow the curvature of the basket. Now I'm going up the hood area with this Gretchen braid. It's really a pretty braid. Work it all the way around. I'm always picking up and having three in my hand and holding it down with the back of my hand. On this first set, let me turn the basket now. It's easy to find where the last two are going to end on the first set. The Gretchen braid is a repeat over and over of the same of the same basic step that I'm doing right now. Three in my hand and over. Now I'm back to where I started to end this braid. Again, I want to pack this all in tight. To end this braid, this is the very first one right here that I went and pulled over. So I'm going to take my last one here. I have two in my hand left. The one on the far left, I'm going to slide down into there. Then, this is the second one. Let me get a tool. This is the second one that I started. I'm going to open that one up, and this very last one in my hand is going to slide right down in there. So I'm actually over two and down with that third piece. Okay, now that we've got that first set done, the second set is the same way. Starting anywhere, we're going to pick up three and go over. But as we do this, because it's a little bit harder on, from that first row down to figure out where to end it, I'm going to put a marker between my two spokes there and bring this one down. I'm going to put a marker between the next two. Oops, it fell out. Put a marker between the next two sets and bring up that third and go down. Those markers are to tell me where I'm going to end this next row. And on from this point on, every previous row, I'm going, or every row in the future, I'm going to um, put those markers in. And again, the Gretchen braid is over two and down. And we're going to work that all the way around. This is a rolled border, and it works its way down the side of the basket. That's one reason I put in those five rows of twining, because I knew this Gretchen braid would come over it, and I, want, um, I wanted the stars to be down a little bit farther to show up really nice. and I'm going to go and finish this row so I can show you how to end it with those markers. This has been a fun series to do. We have had a lot of beautiful colors in this series, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed all these colors that we've used. Turn the basket here. I bet you can't see what I'm doing. Over two. I always have three in my hand. I know you probably can't see right now going down the side of the basket. On the hood part. And here we come. I'm back to where we started. Now, those markers are going to be helpful. Here is my last two in my hand. Here is the last one on the left. I put the marker in there so I can pull that marker out. I know that this piece slides right down in there. 
That's on the very first one I started with. This is my last piece. I'm going to pull this out, pull out the marker, and that slides right down in there. You're going to complete, again, um, as many rows as you want to do. I did about four. You may want to do five. Probably somewhere between four and five rows on this Gretchen braid would make it a really, really pretty. Um, let me pin these out of the way. I want to show you how to trim. There is no trimming on the bottom because of that special braid we did back there. But up here, just come in here and angle cut and cut these off. Remember not to get them too short because once they're too short, they're going to pop out and it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to correct that. Come in here and we're going to do a lot of trimming. Make sure it has a spoke to rest on. I hope you can see in here where I'm trimming, where I'm coming and doing an angle cut and it's resting on the spoke in front of it. But you have a lot of trim work to do in here. And here's some more over here. Angle cut, again being careful not to cut those too short. When you get your trim work done, with your base you will have four wood screws that come with it. And you are ready to put the runners on. What I do is line up my runners, line up my base. Of course you won't have all these sticking out like I have. And then take a pencil. I have this base set on the runners and uh, take my pencil. My holes are already over there pre-drilled and I'm just going to mark where I want those holes on my base. And then I do have my husband, you can't see my marks in here, but I, then I have my husband start with a drill bit these holes and then reline up my base on here and sink those uh, screws on the inside and that's what's going to hold that all together. Then it's optional to you whether you want to stain this or not. I thought it would be pretty stained and my husband liked it so well this way he said oh don't stain it. And I just added a little piece of uh, silk holly here and uh, spray painted a uh, pine cone gold and added that. You can add some accents. You could even put in some kind of a liner and do a really nice green arrangement, some cut greens maybe from the shrubbery around your yard. Um, if you wanted to, you could stain it and um, you could even paint the base. It's a really hard wood. I almost hate to see it painted, but it could be. Uh, I would even put a varnish on the runners and maybe on the base. The base could be varnished before you began to weave on it. That would be a real good idea to help protect the base. I've really enjoyed working this last 13 weeks with you. I hope that you have enjoyed it too. It's been a challenge dyeing all of these reeds and getting all of these beautiful colors that I've gotten, but it's been well worth it because I think that the colors were uh, very appropriate for the baskets and many colors throughout the whole year that were beautifully done. Take some of these baskets and change them and be creative and make something that says it's you. Don't be afraid to change the pattern because that happens all the time. And that's how you make a pattern your pattern. I will look forward to seeing you next 13 weeks. We're going to be working on home decor. And it will be patterns that you can use throughout your home. And again, we'll use a lot more colors. And I'm really looking forward to that series also. Now for a quick review. Here's our 13 patterns we just finished. Jamie said to end it yeah. with a goodbye. I forgot. Well, yeah, now we're going to see your baskets, and now we're no, going to 13. come back okay. on, okay, and whenever you're set. Okay. Again, thank you for being with me, and we'll look for you in the next series. Bye-bye, and be safe.